In my time with the show, <laughs> I've learned how to do a ton of fun things here at Consumer Reports. <sighs> From flying a drone, yeah. to driving an off-road vehicle, even to working in a kitchen and cooking for all of my friends. Hey guys. Josh! Hi. Hi. I was just helping out in the kitchen. What do you think of the food I just cooked? Actually, Jack, you know what? The food is okay, but there are a few things I can show you that'll make it a little bit better. Come with me. All right, Sarah, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Jack, a huge part of cooking is picking the right tool for the job. Mm -hmm. So I can see right away you use stainless steel to cook your eggs. That's not the best choice for eggs. Why is that? Unless you use a lot more butter, eggs are never gonna turn out great in this pan. So what do I do then? Here at Consumer Reports, we test all sorts of different cookware with a number of foods. And we know that nonstick is a great choice for cooking delicate foods like your eggs or pancakes, mm -hmm. things that don't require really high heat. Tell me a little bit about the testing that happens with a nonstick pan. One of the things we do to test this nonstick coating is what we call an egg release test. Our engineers test four eggs consecutively with no butter or oil okay. to see how easily they come up. It's not about how good the food tastes, it's just about how well the pan was able to cook it. But a good nonstick pan isn't all you need. So what about stainless steel, Sarah? What's its use? This pan would be a great choice for the steaks you made. Mm. When you want a really nice crispy sear or even browning, you could go with stainless steel. Sarah says there are a few other types of cookware every kitchen should have. What do we got here? So in addition to the stainless steel pan that you're gonna have, uh -huh. another great idea is a Dutch oven. Ah, okay. This is a real workhorse in the kitchen. You can boil it, you can braise, you can brown, you can even move it from the stove top to the oven straight to your dining table to serve from. That's cool, I like the idea of that, okay. Then there's always cast iron too. We recommend having at least one cast iron pan in your arsenal. Cast iron can retain a really high heat. It can get really hot. Mm. So you could use that for searing and browning, things like that too. And if you take good care of that, that's gonna last forever. This is a three quart saucepan. What's nice about this, it doesn't take up too much space in your cupboard, but it's big enough for basic tasks like boiling pasta, things like that. Oh, okay, nice. And the last one we have here is a roasting pan. So this is really gonna come in handy when you're cooking for a crowd. Since you won't use it too often, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Just look for one with sturdy handles and really solid construction. This was really fascinating. Anything else I need to know? So don't run out and buy one of those big packaged cookware sets. Think about what you cook most and you can piece together the perfect set for you. We do testing to identify just the best nonstick skillet, the best Dutch ovens. We really want to empower the consumer to put together a cookware set for them that makes them the best cook they can be. I think I'm ready to cook. Take it away. All right, let's do this. This time, I think Chef Jack is going to redeem himself. Mwah, c'est magnifique. <laughs> so guys, what do you think of my food now? It's delicious, I love it. Really good. Jack, I think you could do this for a living. Hey, that gives me an idea. <laughs>